So Lightroom just dropped another update for the year with some exciting features that have come out again. And one of these that I've been having to play around with, which I think is a really great addition, is something that you can use to save a lot of your photos, uh, especially if you bring it into your editing mindset, is the lens blur. Now this is a cool new feature for a couple of different reasons. One is kind of embracing that AI side again and making that editing a lot easier, but also it's kind of influencing the way we could go out and shoot in the world. So a lot of the times if we go out and we could very easily misjudge at f-stop and create something which has a little bit too much of a blurred background. Going out and shooting now gives you this mindset to say, well, if I have this tool available for me in the editing process, then maybe I can take a risk to go for a bit more of a higher f-stop number, increase that sort of depth of field, have it uh, not as blurred as I would maybe normally have it, but that means now I could take it into Lightroom and increase the blurness quite easily in the background there. And this is the thing that excites me the most about this feature. Once again, like all of these other AI features and new tools coming in, it's changing the way that I'm going out and shooting. Not just editing, but it's making me take less risks out of the field in places where I may not be able to go again. So let's check out this feature on a couple of photos and look at some of the bits in there. Now on this first one, this is a prime example where I've taken a photo here and you can see that the background is already slightly blurred. So I've gone for that a sort of depth of field bit there, but let's say I want to increase that more. So if we go over to the side, we now have the early access lens blur. Let's open that up. I'll probably keep this down at the workflow with the sharpening tools, the vignettes and all the other effects, because that's how I'm going to treat this. All we have to do is hit the apply button on there, and then it's going to do a pretty good job of trying to find the focal point in your image, select that and apply the blur amount to where it already is. So let's have a look. We know we've got a blur amount up here and we're left with this sort of field down at the bottom. Now I should say that I'm doing this on a MacBook and I like to test these new features out on my MacBook first. Just to see like some of the other AI ones, it's quite heavy on the memory side. Immediately playing around this on my MacBook, I've already found this to be quite slow. And, and that might be I need to update my system now, but I do a lot of my editing when I'm traveling. Now I've got to think about when I'm using these tools, I'll probably have to do it on the desktop behind me. But that aside, let's have a look at what it's done for us. So we have a field here, which is pretty cool, and it's already put us a little bit more blur on this background. I'm going to increase this up to 100 so that we can see the maximum effect it's having and what happens when we move around these sliders down the bottom here. So you can see that that's done a good job there of sort of picking out the subjects and the foreground and just applying that all around the background there. Now the danger is that can look uh, a little bit unnatural as we go in and see some of the sharper lines around the side of that. So we can use this feature over here to basically drag between our background, middle ground and foreground and change where we want the focal point to be on. So let's see what happens if we pull this across the other way. And you can see straight away, look what that's done there. It's added the blurness over the top of this. As I kind of move uh, this range selection up and down as well, that's also gonna influence like how wide we're gonna put that lens blur on. Now let's say we wanted to see where we were affecting on this and just treat some certain parts of it. This is where we can go into the visualized depth and we can refine our range selection that we've got there. So let's pop it back across from this horrendous side to where we want it to and let's see if we can do something about those lines around the subject a bit more. So I'm gonna pull that back across there you can see that's quite nice, that's slipped in, so I'm just going to reduce that range slightly as well. Uh, and now I'm going to go down and select that Visualize Depth button. Now what this Visualize Depth button is doing is giving us some more access to the refined tools down the bottom. And essentially I'm going to treat this almost like masking. So remember when we do our sharpening we have the option to pull down option and we can actually see which areas of our photo we are affecting. It's the same thing here in that we're going to be able to see what's been affected by this range tool and then go over it with a brush and sort of bring in even more blur or take away some blur and basically just refine our selection area. So what I've essentially gone ahead and done already on this just to try it out is I've clicked over into my focus area because I want to paint around the subject a little bit more and just relieve some of those sharper lines so it doesn't look you know, like you've taken a portrait mode on your iPhone with the portrait background blurred as much as possible. Instead, we want to sort of feather that area between them. So you can see once I've clicked on focus there, I've got access to my tools where I can choose the amount I want to go for for it, the size of it, and we just end up with a brush. And then simply, you can see I've already made some paint strokes around there, but I'll just go around 
my subject with the brush and that's showing that bit more of an orange glow that's coming out around there. So what I'm doing there is just adding a bit more of the focus back into that. And I can feather this down as much as I want. So I can also reduce the amount and just try to blend that together. And I think this is a really cool feature that they've built into this tool and that they've not just gone ahead and gone, here's the blurred background, select your range. I like that we've got a little bit more control over this as well because naturally, even though the AI is pretty good at selecting the subjects, it's not going to get it 100% right all the time, especially if you've got a busy background. So let's say we'll reduce the amount a bit. And let's tick off the visualization depth and just go back to seeing what the original image looks like there. So you can see there then as I turn zoom in now, you, you've got some of that blur bit coming around there. And it is quite aggressive. So I haven't quite worked out the exact settings to use for this. It does need more playing around with. But the feature is there to help feather the edges around the subject on that. So definitely a lot more closer playing going along. I'm finding I can't do it on this because it is sucking a lot of memory and it is working very slow for me. Once you're happy with your selection, you've got the plus button over to the side here where you can then go in and just start a new refinement as well. So you can sort of layer on top of each other. You aren't just fixed with that one. So again, a nice addition that's been added in there. But my biggest downfall is that it's like a lot of the other AI tools, it's just using a lot of power. So now's the time to say if you are valuing what you're seeing in this video, please do hit that subscribe button. Helps me out a lot, helps the channel out a lot. Now the other part that I want to show you on this then is the bokeh side. And I don't actually have many night photos myself, so I've just downloaded this with one from Pixels. But it's, it's a good way to show an example of we've got a, an image here in the middle, we've got a little bit of a focus point, but the blur side is at the bottom at the moment. So when we turn on uh, that apply button and it's gonna analyze that for us, it's most likely going to pick out the bottom bit. But that's fine, we can use our range and push it over. But let's have a look at the bokeh tools as well, which are really cool when you've got a lot of little light details in the background. So I can see this working a lot for nighttime stuff, uh, a lot for when you've got some already like lens flares and things there and you want to change the shape of them. So it's analyzed around on that and naturally it's picked at the bottom there. So for the sake of this today, I'm just gonna push this across to the top. Now I could go in uh, with my focus brush there and basically go over where we've got the uh, the tram bit in the middle and that would help to like unfocus that area there so you can see as I paint over that line I'm bringing that back into focus so that's a cool way of kind of showing how that tool might work but I'm not going to go into detail. What I want to just show you there is let's put the blur on maximum again so you can see the full effect of what's happening in this photo. For my refinement, I'm going to put my focus bit on maximum as well. So you can see how I'm using that tool to kind of bring that out and I can get some really creative results with this. We're going to go over here, click this little drop down arrow by the bouquet and you can see here we have a few different shape options. Let's just toggle through those and look at the lights in the background as we do this. You can see now we've got more of the hollow circles popping in. We can go for a hexagon type shape as well on these lights. And there's some really cool creative ones. That's an awesome one that I can see using quite a lot. And then the lens flare type one at the end as well. So once we've got those in place and we're happy with a certain selection, probably for this photo, I'm going to choose that. We can also boost the strength of this as well. So let's whack that up to 100 to see the full effect. Now you see we're starting to get a bit lost in here again, so definitely some like tighter refinement needs to go in. The creativity behind this is really cool. The fact that I'm not stuck with necessarily what I shoot in camera. Now what I will always try and do with these tools, and I encourage everyone else to do, is keep them in the back of your mind, keep and add them into that editing mindset that we've talked about before on this channel, so that when you are out there and shooting, you're picturing the final result in your head what you're going to do when you take this back into the studio. Are there things you could add, things you can fix? This again is one of these tools that is removing some risk for me going out there and potentially trying some different camera settings, knowing that I can get the result I want in post. Never like to use the term fix it in post, but with more and more of these tools coming in, that is becoming a reality with photo editing. So that's the lens blur tool then. So let me know, have you tried this out yourself yet? Have you found uh, any good 
results. What are you using it on currently? What do you think you might use this on? How do you think this might influence yourself going out there and shooting now? Let me know in the comments below. And again, if you found some value to this video and this tool, really appreciate a subscribe. Helps the channel grow a lot. Otherwise, see you in the next one.